this Christmas Eve service. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ, who has come to us as the day born in Bethlehem. Welcome to one and all. Uh, this is, uh, in keeping with the last many months, uh, sort of a, a COVID uh, Christmas Eve service. Of course, as, as uh, normal, we have our, our screen, we're masked up, we're, we're distanced. Uh, of course, we continue to have abbreviated services to limit the time in, indoors this year to sort of limit uh, as much as possible physical interaction. We opted not to use the individual uh, candles for our, our candlelight service, uh, that part of it, but the, the few candles of the candle tapers uh, on the end of each pew will be uh, lighted as we uh, come to the conclusion of the service. Uh, so it will look a little different uh, this year, and Lord willing, in the way be clear, next Christmas Eve will, will be a traditional service. But again, welcome and thank you for being out here for this year's Christmas Eve service. Uh, also, uh, thanks to uh, Logan. Logan wasn't initially going to be able to be with us tonight, but he graciously was, was able to make it. So Logan and Megan are both here this evening, and uh, Emily again graced us with a, the flute solo, and will be a part of the service. So thanks to Emily. Uh, with those notes, brothers and sisters, if you will, prepare your hearts and your minds to worship the living God on this Christmas Eve. The call to worship tonight comes from Isaiah in chapter 9 verses 1 through 7. And so, listen for what the Spirit says to you from the prophet Isaiah. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior and battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of his peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Brothers and sisters, let us worship God.
side of the bulletin. Let us pray. All glory to you, great God, for the gift of your Son, whom you sent to save us. With singing angels, let us praise your name and tell the earth his story, that all may believe, rejoice, and bow down, acknowledging your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture lesson for tonight is the Christmas story as it's found in Luke's Gospel in chapter 2, uh, running from verse 1 through uh, verse 20. If you will, listen for God's word to you. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told about them, about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Friends, the grass withers, and the flowers of the field fade away, but God's word to us is and remains and abides forever. Amen.
this uh, Advent season, the last several weeks, uh, that we've been making our way toward Christmas, I suppose I've hit on two themes in, the, in dealing with the scripture passages that, that kind of come to us in the readings each year. Uh, one is just that overarching story of salvation, the, the salvation story that runs from the book of Genesis to Revelation and the Bible from uh, creation, fall, uh, to the cross, and to final consummation. And then the other uh, sort of a sub-theme that's, that's run through the readings, and it happens each year, is that of apocalypsis, uh, the apocalypse. The, the season of Advent begins with an apocalyptic reading, uh, and we come tonight to our lesson from the Gospel of Luke. As say, Advent begins each, each year with an apocalyptic reading. Apocalyptic means unveiling. It comes from the Greek word apocalypsis. <clears throat> the book of Revelation is certainly the easiest example of, uh, you can find it, an apocalyptic writing in the New Testament. Uh, Luke 21 and Matthew 24 and, and Mark 13, uh, those three gospel chapters are uh, often referred to as little apocalypses. There are other passages scattered here and there in 1st and 2nd Thessalonians and elsewhere that look to the final consummation, the close of history, the ushering in of the eternal state, heaven and hell, of the unveiling, the revealing of God's plan and purpose of the ages for each soul. That's kind of what apocalypse means. So Advent begins with an apocalyptic passage each year because the idea is, is always wrapped up in apocalyptic writings that human beings are to watch, to be alert, to look for the, the cosmic purposes in the everyday. As history plays out, as you examine the smallest details of our individual lives, it's all bound up in the Bible story in a cosmic drama that involves all of creation, human beings, angels and demons, every sentient conscious being uh, is involved, is a participant in this saga, this drama. Every moment of your life, of the world around us in the Bible story is pregnant with eternal meaning. And so it is that on this Christmas Eve we sort of come full circle in our readings. Our scripture lesson tonight is that very familiar passage from Luke's Gospel in chapter 2 which relates the birth of of Jesus to Mary and Joseph 2,000 years ago. And I would submit to you that this passage is as apocalyptic as is the book of Revelation, if we mean the unveiling, the self-disclosure of God's plan and purpose for the ages and for each individual soul. It's what we see, it's what we're encountered with in tonight's lesson. For in this scripture passage, in Luke chapter 2, we have the birth of of Christ, deity in flesh, God made man for the sake of human beings and all creation. In Bethlehem's manger, we have the self-disclosure, par excellence, of God to and for and with us. An anecdote I, I read uh, long ago from the 18th century had it that a man was looking through a telescope at the sun and was alarmed when he saw a giant monster on the sun's surface. The matter was cleared up when he realized that it was a fly that had landed on the surface of the telescope. He was mistaking something in his own line of sight for the reality of the sun's surface. How often have human beings in our various philosophies and religions projected onto God our own misapprehensions and mistaken ideas? In place of God, as of God is, we create idols of wood and stone and of thoughts and words. But with the birth of Jesus, all is made clear. God is disclosed. God reveals God's self. The God of Adam and Eve who sent the sinning couple to live east of Eden. The God who charged Abraham and Sarah to leave family and travel to a distant land. The God of Moses who gave the moral law. The God of the temple who called for sacrifice to cover over the sin of God's people. The God of prophets who challenged injustice and false worship. The God who never gave up on God's people finally arrives for us in the person of Jesus. 
And so this holy God is born to a humble husband and wife, to a virgin mother in a stable on the periphery of the Roman Empire two millennia ago. Angels announced his birth to shepherds and wise men, magi journeyed from the east, from Persia, inquiring after his birth, bringing gifts that point to his divinity and offer their worship. This holy God reveals himself, discloses himself in a man who embraces the outcast, a God whose holiness is witnessed as he sits down to eat with the prostitute and the tax collector, the leper and the child, with everyone who is pushed down or put upon or pushed out. The everlasting God is unveiled as the sick are healed, the hungry are fed, and the dead are raised to life as storms are still and bread is multiplied for the masses. So Christmas is the great apocalyptic turning point of the ages because it is on this occasion that eternity penetrates time and humanity can collectively declare that because they have seen Jesus, they have seen the Father of all souls. The final apocalypse, the final consummation, is that last day when Jesus comes again to judge the quick and the dead, when history is concluded and life beyond the bounds of sickness and death and sin is realized for all. And that is not yet, that is future. But connected to that not yet aspect of apocalyptic thinking, there is an already. God has already revealed himself, disclosed himself, unveiled himself for all of us to encounter and to know. So that apocalyptic reality, the truth of Christmas, confronts us this evening, and every evening, and each new day, and in every moment. The God who reveals himself in Jesus is born again, is present to us in every moment, in the face of the poor, in the home of the rich, in the waiting room, at the hospital, at the side of the casket, in the halls of Congress, and on every main street, in each sunrise, and in the birth of each new baby. God's call to us in Christ is to believe and to trust and to commit our lives to Him as He arrives again now in this Christmas proclamation. And that is where we meet and we encounter and God is revealed to us, disclosed to us supremely and uniquely in the Gospel proclamation. In that, in the Christmas story, He comes again to us, reveals Himself, and calls us to Himself. The Savior has been born, he brings good news and glad tidings of great joy. So the man or woman who is looking for hope, or meaning, or purpose, for peace, and for a new beginning, finds the invitation given. The angels declare to you this day that you will find that hope, and that meaning, and that purpose, that peace, that new beginning, wrapped in bands of cloth, and swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. This, then, is the moment to journey to Bethlehem with the shepherds, to see what the Lord has made known, to witness what God has revealed, that is, God's self, God's love, God's truth, holiness, compassion, and salvation. It is all born for you this day. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. God, you know your own, and you draw all who you would to yourself. And so bring them, bring us to new birth, to new life, and to your salvation. Draw us each irresistibly to yourself and grant us the Christmas gift of saving faith that we might turn to you and share that transforming truth, that grace, with the world. Amen. Well, friends, uh, Emily is going to uh, play a few uh, introductory stanzas uh, for us at silent night, uh, as the, the pew candles are lighted, as they are lit, um, and as once I guess once they are uh, lighted, then uh, we will listen to Megan and Logan as they sing for us silent night.
God's love is born again for us, for you. And so uh, go out this night, go out this day, go in peace, trust the Lord, and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, born in Bethlehem's manger, be with you, around you, and for you now, and evermore, and evermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah and amen.